<laughs> Chris, I'm gonna ask you to get me towels. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Paper towels will be fine. Um, the next thing that I'm doing is uh, is inspired by looking spying at people on Facebook. My dissatisfaction with it. <laughs> That was the longest monologue, by the way. And of course, I was sweating the most during it, so. No, all right, I got water somewhere. Here, whatever. Whatever it is. So yeah, we like to fuck around on Facebook, Jules and I. You know how it is. We have mostly the same friends, that's how couples are. We've been in a relationship for years. It's hard not to know each other's friends. And I knew everyone that Jules talked to. We have access to each other's accounts so I can check her email and Facebook page and see what she's been up to. Let me start by saying that we're Levain Satanists. I know what you're thinking. It is funny, right? <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Baby killing, animal sacrificing, temple worshippers. See, this is a scary, scary night, isn't it? But that ain't it at all. See, everyone thinks that's what the man is to serve out. If you take the time to check, you see that it's all about being an individual and giving into your earthly desires. There's some Nietzsche, or whoever that philosopher is, who rejects the other religions, but we don't sit around drawing pentagrams and eating our cat Beelzebub for your information. We just don't believe in all that organized Western religion bullshit. So we feel right at home amongst the Levans. Now we've been married for nearly two years. We've known each other for seven since we were 15. We've had some rough patches, but who doesn't, right? Once about a year, a year ago, we got Dave over here in our apartment. He used to be my best friend. Seriously, we used to do the whole dying and dash thing together back before I got the warehouse job. Dave and I would smoke up in the afternoon, get the munchies, and go to Applebee's or Denny's and order a ton of food. And Dave would go out to the car and get it started, and I'd make it look like I'm paying the check. What I'd really do is take the check and crumple it up in my pocket and leave a dollar or two tip on the table. So the waitress thinks we paid and left a tip. That was always works. Unless you look all creepy and suspicious, but we're respectable, right? Eventually, you run out of places to go. Now I got the warehouse gig, so we kind of stopped. Anyway, Dave was over here. I'm not sure what happened. We were all smoking all afternoon kind of lazing around, but all of a sudden, Jules comes out of the living room saying that Dave tried to make her blow him. I was so wrapped up in the SNL marathon that I didn't notice they both left the room. Dave comes out of the bathroom, shaking his head, going, no, 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 that's not how it happened, Roger. According to Jules, she was in the bathroom and forgot to lock the door. And Dave stormed in, pulled his cock out, told her that it was cool, he wouldn't tell me. Jules struggled to get out the door, but Dave overpowered her, put her on her knees, and tried to put his dick in her mouth. She twisted away and ran out to the living room. Of course, Dave's got this totally different story, like I'm going to believe that my wife broke in on him while he's pissing and started sucking him off, right? What kind of dumbass does he take me for, huh? And he says to me, all pissed off, smelling fucking bread, Roger, so I get up from the sofa, real calm like, and walk over to Dave and bam, right in the fucking side of the head. Give him a black eye, but not much more. Jules was all pissed at me. We were the hero to the day because he said I didn't look like I believed her. And so, baby, what are you talking about? I know you'd never do that. Gil and I haven't spoken since. In a few years of marriage, stuff like that is going to happen. Especially when your best friend is a fucking kid. Then, like two months later, I'm on Facebook, and I see that there's a new guy on Jules' friends list. Some dude from Los Angeles says he used to be in the movie movies or some shit. One of those real crazy 
certain types. Probably takes it up the ass when he's got short hair, chiseled face, no beard, all muscly. I'm wondering why the hell I don't know about this guy or why he hasn't requested my friendship too, right? So I do some investigating. Looking at a post for Jules and Queens of Common. A picture of the dude without a shirt on from a movie that I actually know about. See, Jules and I love the movies. Because it's one of those 80s exploitation revenge films that everybody watches over and over for the castration scene when they're stoned. Whoops. I don't get the comment that Jules wrote. Good thing that you didn't lose your joke in real life. LOL. Says. Yeah, I know it's just a post, but I don't know why I've never heard about this guy. And now Jules has such a good relationship with him. Say hello to Jules, he's in the other room. Come here for a second. She's all exasperated with me and comes over to the computer and I say to her, Who the fuck is this? She shakes her head and says, You gotta be kidding me, Roger. You woke me up for this? I'm all like, I trust you 100%, baby. Are you fucking this dude? And then she asks me if I've been looking at her phone again. See, to top it all, she's got this guy's number in her phone, and I don't even know it. So now I'm really freaking, asking how many other Facebook friends she's been talking to on her phone. She tells me that I'm impossible, and that she won't discuss this any further until I calm down. But I won't calm down, and I broke the bedroom door after she locked herself in. Jules called the police, and I ended up being arrested until she comes down to the station four hours later to drop the charges. She said, I'm sorry, baby. I should have told you about Tom. You should have never found out that way. I was going to prove why was a surprise for you, because I don't know how much you liked that movie, and that's why I didn't tell you. I admit that I went a little crazy, and then she, and then she lets me fuck her up the ass for the first time since we're married, and I go to work the next day with a smile. But nothing ever happened. So a week goes by, we're in the line like nothing. I get home from work, and Jules finishes up dinner and tells me what the dog did, and her insane, her stupid girlfriend, Carol, is doing. See, Carol is a sincere, post-snorted post slut. Who goes from bar to bar and screws guys on the counters in the ladies' room. I know this goes well. I was in Carol a lot, but I did it once right around the time Jules and I got married. Frankly, I was so fucked up I don't remember much, just like Carol sticking her finger up my ass if I kept doing this up. I did the trick though. In our bathroom session, it was a smashing success. I never mentioned it to Jules, and I'm thinking that Carol didn't either, because I've never heard the end of it. Guys, I remember the one time that Jules thought I was flirting with our friend Sue on Facebook. Hey Sue, she really wants to fuck me. But either way, she wrote some comments about how whatever I said was cute. I felt like I wrote LOL around. Man, you would have thought it was the end of the world. Hours and hours of screaming and I'm fucking words, just tell me. So I'm pretty certain that Jules doesn't know about Carol. I eat dinner, and then I go to check my emails. Look at my Facebook page, and pull up Jules' page, when she goes into the bathroom for a while, and I see that she posts something on the street wall. The dude that was supposed to come over to surprise me, but that never happened. And now she's posting a picture on this wall, so I pull it up. It's a fucking picture of Jules wearing sleep and underwear. I don't trust this shit, right? So I try to keep my pull. Remember what happened last time, right? When I feel the adrenaline rush. It's worse than that, though. I open the comments, one from him that says, Oh, that'll tie me over, baby. Then one from her that says, More on the way, LOL. And he liked it. What the fuck? I mean, what the fuck, right? I feel like I'm getting played here, but I'm trying to keep my goal. I say, Baby, can you come over here for a second? She said that she's drying off and she'll be out in a minute. Finally she comes out and comes over to me and I show her the post. She says, yeah, she told me that he went over to meet us, but he wanted to see a fancy picture of me first. What's the big deal? What's the big deal? What's the big deal? The big deal is that this guy is a fucking scumbag who's taking advantage of his status to, to bribe you and you take me your clothes off. She says, oh, blow up. I'm sick of all your bullshit. I told you I'm doing it for you, so you can keep one of your idols. 
Rose used to talk about how much she loved that movie. She says, and I say, to us, stay away from this scumbag. And she says, or what? And as I'm reeling from the shock of all this, the bitch stabs me in the face with a bullet. No shit. She punctures my cheek with my grandmother's silverware. I go to the emergency room. The emergency room. Sit there for two hours after a long day at work with a blood-soaked towel against my face to get full stitches. The doctor wants to call the police, but I tell him that it was an accident. Accidents happen, right? Me and Jamie can blow his friend apart on a hunting trip so we can let this little domestic thing go, huh? We don't talk for days. Jules doesn't apologize, just leaves my dinner on the table when I get home from work. I'm thinking that maybe I should let bygones be got bygones when she tells me that she's got to go to the store. Now normally, the only time Jules goes to the store in the evening is as if it's for an emergency. I'm not going to argue. I say the keys are on the counter. She goes. I go to the Facebook page. Holy shit, I never thought to look at the messages before, but there's a string of them. Why is she in the I have no idea. But there's at least three of the jewels thoughts that have she needs a bigger cock. What the fuck? Why did she fucking marry me if she didn't like my cock? By the way, you think that small. This washed up husband is eating it up to telling her that he has the solution to her problems. Come on by while your husband's at work. Oh, it's better. He says, I see that you're into all that satanic shit, but so am I. He says that he's going to have a black mass orgy, and he's done this before, and everybody gets what they want. And everyone will get what they want. Besides not knowing proper English, this D-bag doesn't know jack about Jules and what we're believing in. And Jules is the only one who's, who's going on about, is the one who's always going on about real Malayan Satanists. And here comes this phony fuck with this bullshit black mask, and she's all like, fuck me, this new movie star. You freak me out. First I'm thinking that she's been doing this all along. Poor Dave, I didn't believe him. And then I'm just riddled with anger at what a stupid ass I've been, and what a bitch she's been. She's totally freaking out. I rub the fourth star, ending up on my plane down the jewel side and hammering me the night of our wedding. I don't know whether to try to find her, or to try to find out where this top summer lives or play a pool. Maybe have a little fun on my own. Then cast the two together, pick his ass, and get jewels out of the apartment. So I try to calm down. Don't give in to my instincts to kill. I go to my Facebook account. What's good for the boots is good for the gander, right? Post a message to Sue's wall. Post a message to Carol's wall. Wait, just a few minutes. The phone updates and all. First two. Hey, Roger, long time no see. What's up? I write, not much. Kind of bored here. Anything going on? She shoots back. Hang at home. Come over. I click like. I tell her to send me a message with her information. I wash my balls, grab some comments, and head off to Sue's. Fuck that fucking bitch. Two can play this game, I say, though I'm not completely convinced this is going to make things better. I got a message from Carol telling me to meet her at the Red Hand. Tell her maybe they are stuck right now. I arrive at Sue's, ready to go. She's DTF. She drops to her knees and gives me head and then leads me into the bedroom. We have sweaty, awkward sex. I tell her that what Jules did today about the Haskin actor. She tells me I probably shouldn't say this. I mean, Jules is my friend and all, but this is not the first time she's done this, Roger. I feel sick. I feel stupid. But seeing and feeling and you realize that everything is wrong, there's no turning back. It's only going to get worse. And I say, one more thing, sir. Am I small? She laughs. You know what sign? The gross man says, not for me, you're not. I take this as a sort of affirmation that I'm okay and tell her that I'd like to see her again. She grabs my phone and puts my number in it. I go back home when Jules greets me at the door with a kick in the balls. I gasp for air. I say, go fuck yourself, you honey. She says, you go fuck yourself, you little prick. I'm leaving. I tell her not to turn this around on me, but out of the bedroom comes the douchebag aging actor. He doesn't age too well. Bags under the eyes, that sunken look that 40 year olds get who have too little body fat. He says, hey buddy, Jules tells me you're a disciple of Anton, cool. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? He says, dude, we can work something out. 
Your opinions are all about the appreciation of life, of personality, your pleasure. You know, share and share alike. I ask them, who the fuck are you going to share a fuck that night? Man, it's the strength to charge at them and knock them to the ground. Joe starts hitting me on the head with my hand card wooden coat before I pummel this stick. He pushes me away, gets up, and pulls jewels off me. He says, this is not quite what I had in mind. Brushes himself off. Says, you guys are a little too junior high for my taste, and leaves the house. Jules runs after him, he tells him he can't believe her here. He tells her, fuck you, you weren't that great anyway. And I almost like him for a second. Jules comes back, Jules comes back inside crying, tells me that I ruined her life. I wipe the blood off the gash in my forehead, tell her to stop crying, tell her everything's gonna be alright. It's gonna be okay, baby. I feel a calm rush over me, watching her break down. I touch her shoulder sympathetically. I feel at ease with her misery and tell her that I'm going to make it all better. Look at through this baby. It's going to be all right. You'll see. She says, I fucking hate you, you look at that prick. She doesn't mean it. I know it'll get better. We have some rough patches, but who doesn't, right? Because we're in it for better and for worse. And we aren't going to be like everybody else, ever.